I'm Stephen Dial in Dallas. I'm Rudy Kosky in Austin. And I'm Greg Grugan in Houston, and this is Texas The Issue Is. This week, we're focusing in on the race for Texas governor. I recently sat down with Democrat nominee for governor Beto O'Rourke. We talked about abortion rights, his take on if there can be bipartisanship when it comes to gun reforms and the controversial border. It's an uphill climb for, for Democrats in Texas. What makes this year different where the governor's office is actually in play? You look at this total abortion ban, for example, that Greg Abbott signed into law. There's no exception for rape or incest. You look at the, the power grid failure last year that killed more than 700 of our fellow Texans. These attacks on educators, um, how underpaid they are, but now having to worry that their governor is going to come after them for CRT or they want, uh, the governor wants them to turn in the parents of transgender students. All that might tempt someone to despair or give up. And instead, the people of Texas are stepping up. Do you think the abortion issue is something that's going to draw people over to the Democrat side and say, hey, I firmly am strong about this, and so I'm going to vote against Abbott because of abortion? This is essentially a referendum on whether we're going to go back uh, literally half a century um, or whether this state is going to move forward. And in much the same way that the women of Texas won protection for the right to privacy to make these very personal and often painful decisions when they won Roe versus Wade, two Texas attorneys won right here in Dallas County who made that happen. Um, it's going to be Texas women again in 2022, and they will be Republicans. They'll be independents. They'll be Democrats alike. They'll be folks who've never voted in an election before because they didn't think it mattered. And they know that in this one, literally their lives are on the line. They'll be coming out. If Beto O'Rourke is the next governor of Texas, will you remove DPS troopers and the National Guard from the border? What we need are solutions, and here are the ones I'm hearing from our fellow Texans. Let's have a Texas-based guest worker program. You want to come here to work? We love that. Just make sure that you follow the law and that our laws reflect our values and our interests. Republicans and Democrats can work on that together. Make sure it's easier to legally and safely and in an orderly way join family or seek asylum. We do that and we remove everyone who has a legitimate interest to be in this country or to seek to be in this country following the law, we can then focus on those who want to traffic fentanyl or traffic in human beings. Do you think there should be a scale back of National Guard troops and DPS troopers on the border? If, if I were governor, I'd focus on those solutions that we just described. I would end the involuntary activation of these members of the Guard. I think there's still a role for those who volunteer to serve in a complementary capacity, along with Border Patrol, along with some contingent of DPS state troopers. Do you think President Biden is doing enough on the border? No, I don't think anyone in a position of power is doing enough on the border right now. And the best way to do more is to listen to the people who live there. You said Governor Abbott failed Texans, Uvalde. How did he fail? A governor, Greg Abbott, who called a special session to go after CRT, to go after trans kids, to go after our election laws, could not be bothered over these last um, 13 weeks to call a special session to make us safer in our classrooms. Kids across the state are already back in school and their eyes are on us saying, hey guys, uh, why in the last three months could you not do anything to make it less likely that I'll end up the same way as those kids in Uvalde? You've said multiple times in the past, blank, yeah, I'll take your, we'll take your guns. Do you think that's going to help bring someone over to your side? We can stand on, on principle. We can let the perfect become the enemy of the good, or we can get something done. Part of the reason that I traveled this entire state, um, it could be the Fifth Ward in Houston, DeSoto in South Dallas County, uh, Waxahachie in, in Ellis, is to listen to my fellow Texans, Republicans and Democrats, on where the common ground is on protecting the Second Amendment and doing a better job of protecting the lives of our kids. Those three ideas of raising the minimum age of purchase for an AR-15, universal background check, a red flag law, that's progress. We can get that done. What are you listening to as you crisscross the state? What's on your playlist? It's, it's eclectic. Um, there's a lot of Willie Nelson. Um, there's some Public Enemy. There's some Beyonce. There's some Leon Bridges. Um, there's stuff that we just, as we flip through the dials on AM or FM radio, I've never heard before. People have started to give me 
CDs of their music. And they say, hey, Beto, I know you're traveling the whole state. Here, here are my songs. So uh, a songwriter in Lubbock uh, just gave me his, uh, this guy named TG, just gave me his CD of five songs. And they're beautiful. They're, they're amazing. So we have so much to celebrate and be proud of in this state. A lot of ground covered in that interview. Rudy, what one word would you use to describe that interview? Stephen, my one word would be doubling down. Somewhat of a hyphenated, but he did double down on some really hot topics there. I'll give you a pass. That was two words. And Greg, what would, you, what would be your one word? I'd say earnest.